get your kicks. Route 66. Route yeah. The Mother Road. All right. We are finally today talking about Route 66, almost certainly the most famous numbered highway in the world, and especially famous due to the fact that it no longer exists. It is quite a conundrum. So we will take a look at what we can find along Route 66 in today's episode. Fair warning, I won't have every possible random Route 66 place because there are thousands of them. Route 66 goes from Chicago to Santa Monica, California, but you already knew that. All right, today we are talking about westbound Route 66. Here we are on Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago at the corner of Adams. We see the Art Institute right here the third best art museum in the country, and this is the start, traditionally, of Route 66. So here we take a look at Adams Street, begin 66 West, eastbound 66 would be on Jackson Street, they're both one ways in downtown Chicago, and 66, like any other U.S. highway, followed the same rules. It ended at U.S. 41, but Michigan Avenue used to be U.S. 41 before the outer drive was built. They did extend it out to Lakeshore Drive, but people think of this intersection as the traditional beginning right here at Michigan and Adams. You're watching Control City Freak. This is the YouTube channel where we talk about highways and the places that they're signed to go to. If you dig this kind of content, why not give us a like? And if you really like it, why not subscribe? Yeah, subscribe. All right, right away we pass the Berghoff, a famous landmark restaurant in downtown Chicago. I've been there a couple of times, good food. And then we pass the Chicago Calder right here in front of the IBM building. So we're seeing some pretty famous stuff downtown here. We continue down Adams Street. So we see the Loop tracks in front of us and the W Hotel on the right. And we pass the Rookery, a famous building, old time building in downtown Chicago. One of the first skyscrapers in town and one of the oldest ones still standing, if not the oldest one. And then we pass the Sears. I don't care what it's called today. It's the Sears Tower, and in my mind, it will always be the tallest building in the world, although it hasn't been for some time. We cross the Chicago River, still very much downtown here. And right here, we pass by Union Station, which is the hub of all of Amtrak. Some of Amtrak's longest routes begin here. If you want to get on a train to California or to Seattle, you get on it here. And we get another 66 Reassurance Shield here on Adams as we meet Des Plaines Avenue in the West Loop. And here is our junction with 9094. This is the Kennedy Expressway at this point during the rapid fire phase of Kennedy Expressway exits. And here we are in Greek Town at Halstead. This is Greek Town in the West Loop of Chicago. I've actually eaten at this restaurant before as well. It's pretty good. And once we get to Ogden Boulevard, we make our first turn. So we're going to be turning left. We follow the sign to continue down Route 66. We take Ogden down to Harlem, Illinois 43, and we're gonna be turning left here on the west side of Chicago here. Nice white castle there too, good stuff. And we take Harlem Boulevard down to Joliet Road, and we're gonna be turning onto Joliet Road, which is a diagonal that'll connect us to I-55 eventually. Here are signs for I-55, and we are going to be taking 171 Archer Boulevard right here. The reason we're doing that, as we see in this overhead, we have an undrivable section of Route 66. It's been cut off by this quarry here. And going back to Joliet Road to pick up where 66 would have gone, we are getting to I-55 once again now. And here we merge onto I-55 for a brief period because I-55 in this part is built right on 66. We're meeting 355 with the wonderful control cities of Northwest Suburbs and Southwest Suburbs. And we've got Joliet Road straight ahead, which is going to be our exit. And we do see they give us a historic 66 here at the Joliet Road exit. We continue on Joliet Road until we get to Illinois Highway 53, and then we will be following Illinois Highway 53 through Joliet here. And we get our first Joliet Route 66 thing. We get Route 66 Kicks Park. And here in Central Joliet, we are going to be turning left to continue on both 53 and 66. We cross one of these cool bascule drawbridges over the Des Plaines River. And now we're on Chicago Street. In Chicago, we were on Joliet Road. And now in Joliet, we're on Chicago Street. And we are going to be veering to the right soon. We get a little 66 museum here. And we are also meeting US 6 and US 30 great routes in their own right, routes that we will be talking about this channel at some point, and routes that still exist. 
And here we are at US 6 and US 30, and we will be continuing straight. We're concurrent with US 6 for a little bit, so 6 and 66, that's a pretty powerful concurrency, along with South Illinois 53. And we meet our old friend US 52. We're gonna be losing US 6 and picking up US 52. No Route 66 shield here, but we will be taking 52 slash 53. And once we are on that road, we do get a historic 66 trailblazer here. We're gonna be meeting I-80 along with US-52. We've seen this intersection before in the US-52 video, and we see Gary, Indiana, Moline, Rock Island. Gary sign always knocks me out. We're losing US-52, and we're gonna continue straight on Illinois-53 and Route 66. And at this point, we are assigned for Wilmington, Illinois, Chicago and Joliet the other way. Wilmington does seem like a decent choice at this point because you're not gonna sign some super distant destination on a road of this stature. And here we are in Wilmington, Illinois, and they are celebrating Route 66 down there. We continue out and Dwight will be our final control city now. So we're not getting too distant of things, but again, this route, this old 66 is very much a back road. The route in general was replaced by I-55, I-44, I-40, I-15, and I-10. So those would be the routes that would have the long distance control cities. I'm not gonna complain about any short distance control cities on historic 66. You're not taking this road to get from point A to point B, you're taking this road for kicks. We get to Gardner, we're gonna be turning right to continue on 66. And Gardner has got some cool Route 66 stuff right here. I think we actually left 53 and have come back to it, but we are leaving 53 once again, it looks like, to turn onto historic 66. And coming out of Gardner, Historic 66 becomes the frontage road for I-55. So we're going to be going kind of just along 55 here. And here we get another Route 66 park in Chenoa, or just outside of it. And we're going to be meeting US-24 soon as well. Here we're meeting US-24, which is signed for Chenoa and El Paso. Uh, El Paso, that's quite a swing. Now, obviously they mean El Paso, Illinois, but really that direction, like I always say on US-24, it should just be signed for Lawrence, Kansas, because that's the way on US-24. And now in Lexington, Illinois, we are getting a split between old alignments. So we have one alignment, we turn left, one alignment, we go straight. And that's kind of a problem with making a video like this, because there are so many old alignments of Route 66, it changed paths so many times that there's really no one true way that I could show you. So some of the times I'm going to be showing you one alignment and ignoring another alignment just because it would be impossible to show every alignment. And here we are coming into normal Illinois. So this will be the first larger city that we meet outside of the Chicago metro area. We turned off of Shelbourne onto Pine and now off of Pine, we're going to be turning left on Linden to continue on Route 66 through normal. And it snakes its way around normal. Now we're going to be making a right at Willow off of Linden. And we continue down Linden. We're going to get to Main Street. And we are right by Illinois State University normal. And we're going to be turning left down there to pass the university and downtown. So here is the football stadium for ISU. And we continue down Center Street. We're also on Business 51 at this point. This used to be US 51 before it joined up with 55 and 74. We continue down Route 66 and we will be entering Bloomington now, the twin city of normal. And here we are in downtown Bloomington on Center Street. We are meeting Business Loop I-55, which is a freeway around part of Bloomington and normal. We are going to be turning right to get onto southbound Business 55. But we don't take Business Loop 55 all the way back to I-55. We are going to turn here onto Fox Creek. And now we are gonna be turning left just ahead. We see that marker there to get off of Fox Creek Road. And we're gonna be crossing I-55, I believe right here. And ultimately, once we are on this Spike Street, Bake Street, not sure how to say it, we end up as a frontage road of I-55 once again. Here is the Dixie Travel Plaza in McLean. It's a long time truck stop that's been serving Route 66 traffic, now I-55 traffic as well. And then we go through Atlanta, Illinois, and we see this giant Paul Bunyan statue. So that's pretty cool. That's the kind of thing you see on this route, all kinds of weird, kitschy, Americana kind of stuff. It's great. We're reuniting with I-55 again, and we're gonna be kind of along that, so we're gonna skip ahead a little ways. So here we are in Lincoln, and once again, we get a split of two different alignments and what we should be taking. I'm personally gonna be going straight. 
And in Lincoln, we've got this awesome old Tropics restaurant with the old timey neon sign, very Route 66 there. And up ahead, we're gonna be meeting I-55 once again, but we will be getting to the frontage road here, which is Historic 66. From there, we follow 55 more or less until we get to Springfield. So right here is Springfield. I jumped ahead to there. And on the outskirts of Springfield, we get the Lazy A Inn, which is on the National Historic Registry, although it is no longer in business as a motel. And here we are getting to downtown Springfield, the center of the city of Springfield. We will be making a right turn at this intersection here to head through more of downtown. And we're on 9th Street and we will be turning onto Capitol Avenue to check out the Capitol. And we pass right in front of the Illinois State House. We've got that statue of Abraham Lincoln there, so that's pretty cool. And we're going to be turning left on 2nd Street after that. And here we are in Wabash Avenue in Springfield. And we do a little weaving around some city streets here. I'm not going to show every turn, but ultimately we're going to end up on current Illinois 4. And here we are on State Route 4 outside of Springfield. Having turned right onto that old alignment off of State Route 4, we get this super old, cool looking brick road alignment. And then out here we get what I believe is one of many dead man's curves on Route 66. It was the old Jan and Dean song, but it's not just one place. There's a whole lot of places called dead man's curve. We weave back to State Route 4, and we are going to be turning right to continue on 66, and it'll take us back to another 55 frontage road. We continue around this frontage road to Hamill, and Hamill's where things start to change up a little bit. We're on Illinois 157, headed toward Edwardsville, so we're getting close to the St. Louis metro at this point. Here we are in downtown Edwardsville, and we will be turning left off of Main Street, to head down St. Louis Street, and we see the Route 66 Reassurance Shield on that stoplight there. We continue down St. Louis Street, and we're gonna follow that along with Illinois 157, which we just turned on to. And that same intersection on St. Louis Street has this awesome looking old timey gas station. And here is where we get to Chain of Rocks Boulevard or Chain of Rocks Street, which is a more major street and it heads toward the famous Chain of Rocks Bridge. Here we are on Chain of Rocks Road and we are crossing Illinois 255, which I didn't actually know was even a thing. I thought it was just I-255. That continues north of I-255. We pass the Luna Cafe, which is a nice old timey looking spot. And then eventually we get to the old Chain of Rocks Bridge, but as you can see in this picture, we can no longer drive across it. There are several alignments for crossing the Mississippi. There's a bunch of different routes that Route 66 used to cross into St. Louis, but this was the one that existed for the longest amount of time the old Chain of Rocks Bridge that was there before the I-270 bridge. So we'll just go there and we will warp across the Mississippi. But here is a look at the old Chain of Rocks Bridge and we can see it makes its weird curve right in the middle there. And welcome to Missouri. We get no welcome sign because we, I don't know, walked across the bridge and there's no street view here for it. So we're starting out here on Riverview Drive coming off of the Chain of Rocks Bridge, and we do get a Route 66 Reassurance Shield right here. And we continue down Riverview Drive, and we are gonna be turning onto Broadway. And we continue further, we're gonna be turning onto Florissant and heading into town that way. And here we meet I-70 in Northern St. Louis. And at this point, we've ended up on 13th Street, and we are going to end up going south on Tucker into town. We pass right by St. Louis City Hall, which is a lovely looking building here. And we continue on Tucker through downtown St. Louis. We continue south and we can see 6440 up ahead of us, or Route Farty, as they call it in St. Louis. Right here at this intersection with Missouri 100, all of these roads were Route 66 at some point or another with various different alignments. We are going to be going straight. Here we are right by the I-44 and I-55 junction and I-44 is below us here, so I-44 is going to be kind of our home road for the next few miles. We're meeting Missouri 366, which is probably an old 66 output, and we're actually going to be following that, so we will be turning right here. And wow, I didn't know they had quick trip in St. Louis. I know that's a Kansas City thing. We're coming to Limburg Road, 61 and 67, the old kind of loop route of St. Louis before they built 270 and 255. 366 is going to be ending and we're going to be getting dumped into I-44 now. So here's what it looks like. We have the choice of getting onto 
North 270, South 270, or 44 West Tulsa, and Tulsa is the direction we are heading in. We follow I-44's actual pavement for a ways, and then we're getting to Six Flags Road, which is Business Route 44, and it is also Old 66, so we will be getting off at this exit. And we see here Business Route 44 and Historic 66 turn left, Six Flags turn right. And of course, I gotta show you Six Flags over Mid-America here. I can't ignore that and not show you that. I've been to this Six Flags once, it was pretty good. And on the other side of the freeway, we have a right turn for 44 Business and Historic 66. This is the general region of Pacific Missouri, and we are next to I-44 right there. We can see I-44. We go through downtown Cuba, Missouri, and we see the first of many murals that we will see in this episode. So this is a pretty cool mural they've got right downtown. We're pretty near I-44 for most of this area of Missouri, and I already covered I-44. You can check that there. So I'm ignoring that for now and getting just to where 66 is independent. And here we are coming toward Rolla and joining US 63. Right here is where we pass through Missouri Tech. So we've got this sculpture that they have set up there, a kind of Stonehenge-ish kind of thing, and not the last Stonehenge-ish kind of thing that we'll see. Coming out of Rolla, we are once again parallel with I-44. So we'll jump ahead. At our furthest stretch off of I-44, we get onto this Teardrop Road Bridge. So this is a pretty cool old bridge that you can still drive across. And we're jumping ahead to Springfield. We are meeting US 65, so 65 and 66 join together right here. 65 I'll do sometime, one of my favorite roads. And we see just like in Illinois, we have various alignments in Missouri that are signed by various Route 66 coalitions. So we're gonna go straight ahead for this 1936 to 1970 alignment. And here we end up right in downtown Springfield. And in downtown Springfield, we get a nice history museum that is certain to have some Route 66 related stuff in it. And then coming out of Springfield, we get the Route 66 car museum with Route 66 stuff in it. This is US Route 160 at this stoplight, although we don't see it signed on this road for whatever reason. We see 44 west, two miles, 44 east, two miles the other way, and US 60 will be five miles down the road, but it doesn't actually tell us we're meeting 160. We're meeting I-44 once again, and of course, this being MoDOT, we get the wonderful control cities of Joplin and Rolla. Certainly wouldn't want Tulsa and St. Louis. And here we're getting another cutoff for Historic 66, and Missouri Route 96 is going to turn left. We're just going to stay on that. It's actually better to stay on Missouri 96 because we will be meeting 66 on it soon anyway. We're now in Carthage, and we're going to be meeting US 71 shortly, and we see we're back on Historic Route 66 as well as Missouri 96. We cross over I-49, but we don't have an interchange with it on this particular road, Oak Street. Here's a cool little airbrush thing that they got on the side of the road here. Just outside of Carthage, we've got the 66 Drive-In Theater. So, wow, Drive-In Theater is still a thing over here. Now we're going to be getting on Missouri Highway 43, which is also historic 66 at this point. And following that, we end up in downtown Joplin. So here is what it looks like in Joplin. We're now meeting Missouri Highway 66, and we're going to be turning right on that to stay on Historic 66 as we continue through Joplin. Joplin is right on the border, so now we get to Kansas. Welcome to Kansas. I-44 has never gone through Kansas, but Route 66 that I-44 bypassed did go through Kansas, through a little bit. Kansas is the state with the least amount of Route 66 in it. And here we are meeting 166, and this was requested by the Derpog. He made a video about all of the 66 children, so he wanted to see it from a 66 perspective. So thank you so much for that. We also meet 400. Should mention, we've got a Patreon going. That is actually where the Derpog made this request, was on the Patreon, and you can too if you sign up for a $5 Patreon membership, plus get some other membership perks. Really appreciate the support. You can also make exit requests the old-fashioned way, with a $5 super sticker on any video. We're now in Galena, Kansas, and Historic Route 66, we get a lovely mural here, and we see Bike Route 66, Kansas Highway 66. We're going to be continuing straight that way. We've still got this detour West 166 in the foreground, and a nice Kansas 66 that somebody made in this park here. 
And we see on 3rd Street, we continue to go down Historic 66 and the 66 bike path. Here's a closer look at the Historic 66 sign in Kansas, what they look like in Kansas. Every state does them a little bit differently. And here is the Kansas Route 66 Visitors Center, which is conveniently inside a Phillips 66 gas station. We're now in Baxter Springs, Kansas, where we are meeting 166, the real thing, not just the detour. And we're also on Alt 69 here. And interesting, they got uh, pickleball here in Baxter Springs, Kansas. Who knew that Baxter Springs, Kansas has hipsters? We continue down Historic 66. We see this statue of this horse and also welcome to Oklahoma. And well, this is certainly not much of a control city. I'm not going to try and pronounce that one. I'm sure I'll get it wrong. But we get one city five miles away. So they're not signing too distant out here. We're meeting US 69, the real one, not the alt one. And we will continue on 69 South from this point. And you see at this intersection, we've got some really major cities from which to choose. This is Mickey Mantle country up here in Northeast Oklahoma. So not too surprising that Route 66 at this point is called Mickey Mantle Boulevard. We're now in Miami, Oklahoma, which quite different than Miami, Miami. And we are going to be turning right on West Oklahoma 10. And now we're on a concurrent US 69, US 59 and historic 66 south of Miami. We're meeting I-44 as we are wont to do as I-44 is kind of our parent route right now or child route, I guess, since 66 came first. And now we're gonna be meeting US 60 and US 60 and 66 actually had kind of a long history together, I believe. The original number for US 66 was going to be 60, but 60 they decided would continue to Virginia and 66 would be the one heading towards Chicago. Quite a series of roads here as we continue on South 69 and West 60 at this point and South 59 is going to be leaving us. We're in Vinta and we are gonna be continuing on 60 and 69. Oklahoma not signing historic 66 so much as the other states which is interesting because Oklahoma really pumps up its Route 66 history. We make it to Oklahoma Highway 66. Hmm, wonder what that used to be. Yeah, obviously that is current old 66 given a new number, a state route number since the US number was decommissioned. So we will follow West 66 and 60 will leave. Traditionally, we would meet back up with 60 in the stack interchange in downtown LA, but 60 is shortened well before then and 66 doesn't exist. And now we're getting Chelsea and Tulsa. So State Route 66 is a big enough road that they can sign places like Tulsa. We're gonna be meeting I-44 once again, along with US 412. 44 was built right on 66, so we take 44 for a ways but then we are getting back off of 44 on this exit 240. We continue on the town on old 66 and we meet 244 and 169, part of the loop around Tulsa. And here we have some Route 66 strip mall kind of thing right here in Tulsa. And this one's pretty cool. We got an old timey Route 66 gas station once again with the Tulsa skyline looming right behind it. So I like that. That looks pretty cool to be driving down this road. We have now crossed under the downtown loop on 11th Street. So we are in central Tulsa for real now. Get this nice 66 pedestrian bridge and we see we're going to be turning left soon. And we do get a great view of the Tulsa skyline on this road. Leaving downtown Tulsa, we're now on Southwest Boulevard. So we will follow that over the river here. We're right next to I-44 again, and we see that dreaded Sepulpa sign along with Oklahoma City, and we will follow along I-44 on Southwest Boulevard. Old 66 at this point still is State Highway 66, which we can see in this stoplight with this SH-66 thing. And here we are in Sepulpa, and we get an auto museum and this giant old-timey gas thing, so that's pretty cool-looking architecture there. We also get the TP drive-in, so drive-ins, eh, they might not be in your neighborhood, but if you live on Route 66, they're gonna be around. And here's a look at the way Oklahoma signs historic Route 66. We're getting pretty small towns here now because you, of course, would not be taking this route if you to go to Oklahoma City. If you were a normie, you would be taking I-44. 
And now we're meeting US 177. So going straight, we get Oklahoma City and turning either ways, we have choice of Shawnee and Stillwater. We're meeting I-44 again, but that's the wrong direction. Back to Tulsa, we will continue straight west on State Highway 66. We pass I-35, which is signed south for Oklahoma City downtown. And we have now merged with US-77 along with Historic 66 here. We're in Edmond, Oklahoma, one of the larger suburbs of Oklahoma City. And we are going to be turning left at this intersection to continue on 77 and 66. 77 becomes something of a freeway here, but we are going to be turning right to stay on Historic 66. We're meeting I-44 once again. I-44 finally isn't a toll road here. It's a free road here. And after a couple of miles on I-44, we are going to exit for Oklahoma US-66 historic route. And that is the Lincoln Boulevard exit for the state capitol. Driving down Lincoln Boulevard, we see the state capitol right there. So that's the second state capitol that we've seen on this route. And right here is the intersection for 23rd Street. That is where old US-266 was, so the Derpog wanted to see that as well, where 66 met its old child route 266. So thank you so much for that. In this case, neither route any longer exists. Although 266 does exist further to the east, but it no longer touches what 66 used to be. We end up back on I-44, heading toward I-40, and State Highway 66 is going to be exiting soon. We're now on Business Loop 40 and US 81, and we are outside of Oklahoma City at this point. We are now in El Reno, and we still see US 66 on the stoplights here in El Reno. Right here was the site of a Super 8 motel where I stayed one time in El Reno after the longest single day drive I ever had personally, driving from Sedona to El Reno by myself. And here's what it looks like in downtown El Reno, and Historic 66 is well signed here. We're on 40 Business Loop coming out of El Reno, and we're going to be turning on to Historic 66. In western Oklahoma, we are never too far away from I-40. In fact, you can see I-40 in the distance here, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Here's where we meet US-281. It's signed for I-40 and Geary. And we are now on the US 281 spur and we will be turning left to continue on 66. 281 South is going to leave us and we are going to go straight to continue on 66 as this tiny sign tells us to do. And we've come back around to very close to I-40 so we see I-40 right there next to us. We're now in Clinton, Oklahoma and we are going to be meeting US 83. And you see up ahead, there's signs for US 66. You can go straight or you can turn left. So another new alignment thing. On I-40 itself, you do get a 66 historic route exit for Clinton here. But after Clinton, we reconverge with I-40 and we will follow Frontage Road for most of the rest of Oklahoma. We do get off of I-40 in Elk City. So in Elk City, we are following Oklahoma Highway 6, and we pass this hotel where the US 66 Association met in 1931 to kind of plan alignments. We more or less follow I-40 until we get to Sayre, and then we are meeting US 283. We see 283 North will be going to the right, and 66 will be going to the left. And now we are on a very small alignment of the road, and we are in Texola, the wonderful named city of Texola. We get a Will Rogers Highway marker in Texola. You know, Will Rogers is hugely important in Oklahoma. And Route 66, its entirety is called the Will Rogers Highway. I don't actually know much about Will Rogers myself. It's before my time. And we cross into Texas. We get this very small Texas state line. No drive friendly the Texas way or anything cool like that. As we come into Texas, we start out on the Interstate 40 service road. No surprise in Texas, we're going to have frontage roads, a bunch so we are on the southern frontage road for old 66. we pass the groom water tower which you can actually see better from i-40 which i showed in my i-40 video and also the groom giant cross we didn't pass the effingham illinois one in this one here we're going to merge onto county road 2 on our way toward amarillo and then we turn right onto us 287 which is a road i'll do at some point as well on 287, we merge back onto mainline I-40, and we head into Amarillo, and we are on the 40 frontage road, 
Old 66 and we pass one of the most famous 66 sites, the Big Texan Steakhouse. I've still never been. And we're in downtown Amarillo and we're gonna turn left onto US 87, although there is no Route 66 sign telling us to do so. We're on Business Loop 40 now and also we do get signage for Historic 66. We pass by the famous Cadillac Ranch outside of Amarillo, west of Amarillo. We can see that from Old 66. And we reach Adrian, Texas, which is the midpoint of Route 66, which is why we get Midpoint Campground. And here's the exact midpoint, although depending on the alignment, I'm sure the midpoint has changed several times. But Adrian is claiming it, so I'll allow that. And we see we are equidistant between Los Angeles and Chicago. We are probably not at the midpoint of this video, although we are getting to the better part of it since the West is way more awesome this, as far as 66 goes. But we are probably beyond the midpoint. It took us 20 minutes to get to Joliet, I think. We're back on I-40. Route 66 is going to be following I-40, but we will exit here on Business Loop for Glen Rio. And we see we're at exit zero, so we're going to be heading into New Mexico. And we see we're going to be turning right. They give us the Business Loop 40 sign to turn right, but not the Historic 66 sign. We cross into New Mexico, but there's not a sign telling us so. It's just the pavement changes, and that's how we know we are now in New Mexico. Kind of a shame because they have such an awesome Welcome to New Mexico sign on I-40 itself. We get a pretty rough stretch in New Mexico right away. I'm not sure how drivable this stretch is. But once we get through that, we are going to be on 40 Frontage Road all the way to Tucumcari. So I will skip ahead since we already covered 40 itself. Tucumcari's got a lot of classic old-timey motels and whatnot. So here is one of the ones that we see, one of the early ones. Past the Motel Safari. Yeah, they've all got these great signs. Really cool looking. And we get just a Route 66 in general service area. So we get a cool design there. And we get a Historic 66 sign that seems to be serving the other bound lanes more than ours for some reason. That's more on the east side of the road. We're merging with US 54, but there are no signs for 54 at this point. And we come back to I-40 after diverting through Tucumcari. We stay on I-40 until Santa Rosa, and then we're gonna get off for Business Loop in Santa Rosa, which is also US 84 and US 54. I'm skipping Santa Rosa though, because it's such a dumb name control city, so therefore I'm skipping it. And right here on I-40, this is the cutoff for the old Santa Fe routing, because for a while Route 66 did loop up to Santa Fe and then come back down to here. We're not gonna be doing the Santa Fe stuff though, we're going straight through to Albuquerque. And on the outskirts of Albuquerque, we're getting a Route 66 museum. And we're forced to rejoin I-40 again, but see here at this exit for Central Avenue, Route 66 is listed, so we will be getting off here. On Central Avenue, we go right by the University of New Mexico, go Lobos, and we get a pretty cool Route 66 style diner along here on Central Avenue. And Central Avenue, you see signs, having driven this road recently, you see signs just saying Route 66 as often as you see signs saying Central Avenue, maybe more often. We go right through downtown Albuquerque. We see the tallest building in Albuquerque right there. And any Breaking Bad fans will recognize the Crystal Palace, which we drive right by. I drove by this too and took a picture of it as well, but my picture didn't come out very good. Fourth Street is former US 85, although US 85 has moved over to I-25 now. And we are continuing right through downtown Albuquerque. Get the Hotel Blue, and we have these cool 66 signs on lampposts all down Central Avenue. So Albuquerque really celebrating Route 66 quite a bit. And any Better Call Saul fans know the Doghouse. I stopped here as well, and it was delicious. It was uh, definitely would recommend. Central Avenue makes a turn, so we continue along Central Avenue slash Historic 66. Right here, we cross the Rio Grande River, which does make it to Albuquerque. Seems weird to think of it, but it is there. And we're meeting I-44. We're getting the lovely control cities of Gallup and Santa Rosa, so we will be following it toward Gallup. 66 exits off of 44 here. They don't give you any signs, but this is the exit for historic 66 to continue. And along this stretch of 66, we get another Dead Man's Curve. This one looks a little bit more precarious than the last Dead Man's Curve we saw. Right here, they don't tell us this, but Route 124 is historic 66, so we continue west on Route 124. 
Get the Budville Trading Company, a nice old building out here. And in this part, you can see some defunct gas stations that were definitely there for Route 66's heyday. 124 leads us back to I-40, so we're going to be getting back on I-40 once again. And we get off in Grants, and this drive through neon sign was requested by Owen Suhi, so thank you so much for that. I wouldn't have found this otherwise. It's a pretty cool looking thing. And he said he requested that because he got his first speeding ticket right here on Route 66, right by it. At this point, we're on New Mexico 122, but it is also Historic 66. They're just not signing it too much. And Route 122 eventually becomes I-40 Frontage Road, so we're merging back to the I-40. And we see old 66 right there, but there's no street view for it, so I have to show you from I-40. We're getting Continental Divide, this exit. So right here is where the Continental Divide is going to be. The we continue down 40 to Gallup. You can see more detail of that in the I-40 video. And we have exit 26 for East Gallup and Route 66 is the main drag in Gallup. Here's the El Rancho Hotel in Gallup. This is where Hollywood stars used to stay back in the 30s when they'd come out here to film stuff. And here's the Gallup Taco Bell. And yes, I have eaten at this one. I know I'm a fast food junkie, but I'd been living in Korea for two years and it was my first time back in the States and my buddy and I were on a road trip and it was day two and I was like, I don't care how much delicious new Mexican food there is in this town, I need Taco Bell. We pass right by the Gallup Cultural Center here on Route 66 and a look at, eh, it's kind of what Gallup is when I think of Gallup nowadays. It is a little bit run down for sure. Route 66 is very strody, lots of just chain motels and whatnot. And here we are meeting US 491, which used to be Route 666. It's heading to Shiprock, and the Dirt Pog wanted to see this one as well. So thank you so much for that. I've driven this before. I've gotten off at Gallup and taken what was then called 666. I rode it when it was that up to Shiprock. Coming out of Gallup, we're going to be turning right onto New Mexico 118, which is historic Route 66, as we can see. Pretty cool scenery over here, although I wasn't able to find anything from more recent street view. And now we cross over the Arizona state line. We see 66 is the frontage road here technically, but we are on 40's pavement for this picture because again, there's no street view on the other one. We get a rest stop right at the beginning of Arizona and Route 66 actually crosses the rest area itself. Old 66's pavement is the rest area service road and we get a lovely welcome to Arizona sign on the other side of the rest area and at this point 66 becomes I-40 again. On I-40 we're meeting southbound 191 and we will be concurrent with 191 and hidden historic 66 along with I-40 throughout this part and the Derp Hog also wanted to see US 191 in its intersection so here's that and thank you for the request. We see we get 191 North and five miles and Holbrook and Flagstaff. And that is a plus mileage sign signing for Arizona, which is what we would expect from the champs, I suppose. Flagstaff certainly should be the last line. Holbrook, great secondary. Next exit, perfect. 191 leaves and we will continue on I-40 slash historic 66. In this area, we pass the petrified forest doesn't really look very foresty, but I'm not sure how good of a view we get from it here. Maybe if you're more inside, you can see more. And at Petrified Forest National Park, we drive right past this old jalopy that is set up there. So that's pretty cool. We leave 40 and come into Holbrook, and Holbrook, Route 66, not surprisingly, is the main drag, and we get the Holbrook Inn right here. On the other side of Holbrook and the 40 business loop, we are getting back onto 40. And we get off, we get 87 south for Winslow, we have exited 40 once again, and 66 heading toward Winslow. We get a giant Route 66 sign as we enter Winslow, Arizona, and we head downtown. This is actually one block north of westbound 66. This is eastbound 66 because it is a one-way street, but we get this big giant Arizona US 66 thing in the middle and our standing on the corner statue in Winslow, Arizona. Well, I'm standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Oh, Arizona seems they finally made a mistake coming in out of Winslow. We get Junction 99, cool, rest area 15, and Flagstaff 53. You know it would be a better secondary than rest area though, would be 
Winona. I mean, they said, don't forget Winona, and then you did. Don't forget Winona. Here is our exit for Winona, exit 211. Not much of a town. Amazing that it got into the song, I guess just because it rhymes. We can leave 40 in Winona, though, and then we get, we see that it is more pine trees and tall mountains at this point. Flagstaff left and Page to the right because US-89 is going to head to Page. Get an old shell station with the old-timey sign up here, so that's pretty cool. This bridge is close to traffic. It looks like you can walk or bike across it, but you can no longer drive across this old 66 bridge in Flagstaff. This is the Walnut Canyon Bridge. Heading toward Flagstaff, we get the Americana Inn. And here we are heading into downtown Flagstaff, and wow, all of a sudden we get traffic on 66. Flagstaff, popular place to visit. And we're getting our fantastic signs for I-40, West Business Loop in 66 to 40, Los Angeles, and 217 and 40 for Sedona and Phoenix, Sedona being 89A. And at the 40 junction, we are getting West 40 Los Angeles, East 40 Albuquerque. Those are like over a thousand miles apart. That is lovely, Arizona. Lovely. We get back onto I-40, but we will be leaving I-40 here at Hughes Avenue. And we follow Brannigan Park Road through the mountains just a little bit north of I-40. And we reach a point where we can no longer continue. So this is closed to traffic from what it seems. Or they suggest you don't take it. Primitive area. Now we're getting a 76 and 66. What? I guess because we're heading toward west, so we get more of these Unical stations around. We get off I-40 again in Williams. We have the business loop for Williams. And northbound over here, you can head to the Grand Canyon. Fastest way to the Grand Canyon through there. Williams, the gateway to the Grand Canyon. I've driven through Williams not too long ago. Picked up stuff there for camping at the Grand Canyon. Good times. Here is downtown Williams, and we are on Historic 66 in downtown Williams right here. And on the outskirts of Williams, we're getting 40 West Los Angeles, so we'll be joining 40 again for a short time. Here in Ash Fork, we get off at Crookton Road, and then we will have a fairly long independent section of Route 66 to check out. Mike Shoemaker wanted to see this exit, and he requested that on the Patreon, so thank you so much, Mike. So we see here Crookton Road turn right for Historic 66. So here it is, 66 all on its own in northern Arizona. We pass through Slegman, which is a pretty small town. It's pretty remote, pretty far removed from I-40, and it's got quite a bit of Route 66 Americana. Out here, we've even got an old Burma shave ad thing we got going. We got that old bull is some cow's bow, Burma shave. Awesome. Lovely to see that. I'm too young to remember actual Burma shave ads, but I appreciate it. And out of here at this junction, we're getting Slugman one way and Kingman the other way, and that is a sensible control setup here because, you know, Flagstaff and uh, Los Angeles, you're not gonna be on this road for that. Here's the entrance to the Grand Canyon Caverns, and this was requested by Mathman is Awesome, so thank you so much for that request. Really appreciate that. We continue down, we're in the much smaller town of Truxton, so we get the Truxton Cafe here. And just wide open road over at this point. Right around here, heading to Kingman. This is the fastest I ever got my car to go. And we head into Kingman. First, we pass the super famous and important historic Arby's that, for whatever reason, I've eaten at every time I've ever been in Kingman. We're meeting I-40 once again, but we are not getting on I-40. We are continuing straight on Andy Devine Avenue, Historic 66 through Kingman. Meeting US-93 also, so we're getting signs for Las Vegas and Phoenix. So... Arizona hitting it out of the park as they always do. In Kingman, we get a lot of 66 stuff. We get 66 mileage signs, 54 miles left of Arizona. We get this big giant 66 sign. And now we are getting a historic Kingman downtown sign as well. We get the Kingman Visitor Center and Route 66 Museum, one of the larger Route 66 museums. We've seen several in this episode. One that I'd like to check out one day, but in Kingman, I'm always, uh, you know, I got time for Arby's, but then I've always got to get out of town because I'm always in a hurry to get to Vegas, Grand Canyon, whatever it is I'm going to. And we are still independent here, but we are a frontage road for I-40 for a little bit on the west side of Kingman. But 66 continues on its own. We're going to be able to turn to continue on historic Route 66. And one old alignment is going to go up the Oatman Highway, historic Route 66. So we're going to head to Oatman. 
The Oatman Highway is not for the faint of heart. It is sensible that it is bypassed by I-40 and a number of other routes at this point. Drive it at your peril, but it is an interesting road to drive for sure. I have done it. And here is what downtown Oatman looks like. I don't see any burrows in this picture in this particular street view, but I did see them the one time that I went to Oatman. In fact, here is the one time I was in Oatman. Uh, I was there with my dad, so my dad in the picture here back in 1997. Oatman was also requested by Olympian Product. He wanted to see some Oatman scenes, so thank you so much for that request. Really appreciate it. It's a memorable place if you've ever been. And we come out of Oatman and we are going to get historic Route 66 for Golden Shores. Bullhead City and Laughlin turn right, and that's actually the way I went the one time I went through Oatman as my dad and I were on our way to Laughlin for the night and ultimately to LA. The Oatman Highway on this side is not much easier than it is on the other side. And then we finally make it back to I-40 shortly before crossing into California. We're crossing the Colorado River on I-40, but that bridge in the background would be the old 66 bridge, I believe. And we get no Welcome to California sign, just like on I-40, we get California State Line. And we take our first exit off of I-40 once we cross into California, and now we get this historical Route 66 sign right away. That area, though, you can't really go through, so we have to get back onto 40, and now we're going to be getting on to US 95. Not southbound US 95, though, we're heading north. We head into Needles, and so we see this Needles Route 66 sign near Central Needles. And we can see, ah, lots of Needles has seen better days. This gas station no longer exists. We come out of Needles, we get a T-junction, and we gotta turn left for Barstow. They don't give us a historic 66 sign here, but obviously we know Barstow would be the way we'd be going. Out here, we are going to be hitting County Highway 66. San Bernardino County Highway 66 is our old Route 66 in these parts. And we're gonna be turning right onto that. On County Highway 66, we get a junction with northbound US 95 and it is signed for Searchlight and Las Vegas. We follow US 95 up a ways. Searchlight Las Vegas are still going to be straight ahead and we are going to be turning left off of US 95 onto Goffs Road headed for Goffs and that is historic 66 right here. So here's a look at Goffs Road and we've got that Route 66 sign painted on the road kind of like what they do with 68 in GTA 5. So obviously they got that from this. Goffs isn't much of a town, so I bypassed that. And we're going to be meeting I-40 once again, signed for Needles and Barstow. So, ugh. We just had Flagstaff in LA, and now we get Needles and Barstow, California. We actually aren't getting on 40, though, at this point. We are going straight because there's still a 66 alignment straight ahead. Going down this way, this is the way to Joshua Tree National Park. So we see the entrance for that. And also, not much updating. This is obviously an old street view down here on this alignment. We get a Roy's Motel and Cafe down in Amboy. So this is definitely out in the middle of nowhere. And we loop back around where we get to Ludlow. And we can see I-40 in the background here. This is where we meet I-40 once again. And we continue west on County Road 66, which will take us to I-40. So there is County Road 66. It's a frontage road for I-40. We can see it from I-40 here. After following some frontage road, we end up at the Baghdad Cafe. This is in Newberry Springs, California, kind of a small town in the middle of nowhere. And this was requested by Dallas Bittinger on the Patreon. So thanks so much. Appreciate that. It's a cool looking spot. We continue along this frontage road and we can see Barstow there in the distance on this County Road 66, along with the mainline rail tracks. And we head into Barstow, Main Street is either go straight or turn right, which is kind of weird. And we're gonna be going straight. And we cross I-15 in downtown, or heading toward downtown Barstow. And we cross I-15 on Main Street. We can see if you turn left, I-15 South San Bernardino up ahead. And we get to another Roy's Cafe here in Barstow, the city of Barstow. We're on historic Route 66 and County Route 66 either way, and we can see the ways to such scenic attractions as the Barstow Greyhound Terminal. Here we are in downtown Barstow, and we get a nice historic 66 marker there. We've left Barstow, and we're in Oro Grande, California, and we see the Bottle Ranch here, and this was also requested by Dallas Bittinger, so I really appreciate that as well. And no, that's not two of the same dog, that's just a weird street view glitch. 
We swing around this old alignment, we end up back at I-15 in Victorville, in the Victorville area. And here we are in Victorville, California, and we see turn right for Historic 66. And Victorville, what do you know, they've got a Route 66 museum as well. We're meeting I-15 again in the Victorville area, and it's signed South San Bernardino once again. And we've got to get on I-15 itself for a ways because we need to use I-15 to pass the Cajon Pass. Here we are within the Cajon Pass and we have Cleghorn Road exit and from that point we can take local streets down the rest of Cajon Pass. We continue down this alignment and we end up right around at the I-15 and 215 junction going underneath those ramps. And on Cajon Boulevard we also pass the 215 and 210 junction. So we are now in San Bernardino and we pass by the historic first ever McDonald's. So that's pretty cool right here in San Bernardino. We're on Mount Vernon Avenue and we're gonna turn right onto Foothill Boulevard and continue that. That was for a long time California State Highway 66 after it was decommissioned as US 66. We were kind of along 215 in San Bernardino. We're now back to I-15, which is well west of downtown San Bernardino. So I-15 and Foothill Boulevard. We continue down Foothill, which is California 66, and we get a sign for West 210 Pasadena. And here we pass Azusa Pacific University, uh, the alma mater of the great Christian Okoye, the awesome Chiefs running back from back in the day. We're now on Huntington Road, and we've got exits to the 210 and the 605 right there. And now Huntington Road is going to be splitting off. We're going to stay on Colorado Boulevard, the famed Colorado Boulevard, into Pasadena. And we take Colorado Boulevard, Historic 66, into downtown Pasadena right here. Coming out of downtown, we're now on Arroyo Parkway, and we have South 210, the Arroyo Seco Parkway, coming up. So we turn left onto that, and we take the what is largely known as the first freeway ever built, and we take that into central Los Angeles. 66, of course, had several alignments through LA. This is just the one that we are looking at. We meet the five. We're not too far away from Dodger Stadium, but I couldn't find an angle to show it to you, so I'm not going to. But 101 and the 110 Los Angeles straight ahead. We're on the 110, not the 101. And the exit for uh, Santa Ana right up here. Here's the exit for Dodger Stadium, though. Stadium way, Dodger Stadium. But yeah, there's just no way to see it from the road. And 110 South downtown, we shall continue. We're meeting the 101, the Hollywood Freeway, and the four-level interchange with the 110 and the 101. Route 66, I believe, has been all four roads going into that intersection at some point or another. But it's also been Sunset Boulevard, which is where we are going to be getting off. Sunset Boulevard. So here's a look going into the Stack Interchange and downtown LA, and we are leaving to get onto Sunset. So we're on Sunset Boulevard now. They call this the east side in LA, but it's still west it's still 4033 west sunset but we haven't gotten to the hollywood freeway yet and we are going to be taking this to santa monica boulevard and now we are on santa monica boulevard and we are crossing the 101 the hollywood freeway we see the sign for that you can get on north or south and we will continue through hollywood on santa monica here is vine street so hollywood and vine is right up the way and we cross into beverly hills we've got this intersection with rodeo drive and heading through Beverly Hills, we pass right by the Beverly Hilton. And continuing west on Santa Monica Boulevard, we're really on the west side now, and we meet the 405. We continue on Santa Monica until we get to Santa Monica and Lincoln. And this is actually the gas station that Clark W. Griswold went to at the end of National Lampoon's vacation. And check that out right there. And we just turn left onto Lincoln Avenue. We don't get a sign for it, but that is Historic 66. And we get here to Lincoln and Olympic in Santa Monica, and that is Mel's Drive-In. And we can also see on that sign there at Olympic that this is the end of Historic 66. So that's where my video will end. You might be expecting the Santa Monica Pier, but despite popular opinion, Route 66 and all the alignments that it had in California never ended at the Santa Monica Pier. All right, let's talk about Todd's the way it should be. For Route 66, obviously there's way, way, way too many possible little roads to cover and I can't do like I did on US 52, so I'm just gonna say Now you go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri 
I'll throw in Tulsa. And Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is mighty pretty. Amarillo, they don't mention. Albuquerque, they don't mention for some reason. Gallup, New Mexico. Winslow, Arizona. Don't forget Winona, Flagstaff, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino. Then Los Angeles and Santa Monica. Yeah, so yeah, like I say, I'm just taking the song. Probably a lot more we could add to that if you are actually driving it for real. All right, thank you so much for watching this episode of Control City Freak. Lots and lots of stuff to cover on a road that doesn't really exist anymore, so that's pretty fun. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Todd. Keep on trucking.